Hello. It's nice to see you again. I have some news before we begin. Andrew Hussey has just unveiled his first official personality assessment. A reinvention of the field of astrology known as the Homestuck Extended Zodiac. If your desire leads you to take it, the test will unveil your true sign. To do this, it will take into account the aspect your thoughts are bound to, the lunar sway that keeps your worldview in its thrall, and the color of your blood in Alternia's alien society. We shall discuss the aspects here, and conversations on the lunar kingdoms and the casts of blood are sure to follow. The test confirms that heroes beholden to an aspect have the nature of their thoughts bound to its influence, evoking the psychic power displayed by the Earthbound. However, it does not speak to the full nature of the aspects themselves. That is what I am here to discuss. By the conclusion of this footage, you will understand the loose domains of each aspect. Although it is a fact there will still be mysteries we must later discuss. Most importantly, please remember that identity is an elusive and mysterious thing. And no tests can know you as well as you know yourself. If you feel this test results do not describe you, please feel comfortable reading the other descriptions until you feel you've found your match. This is all for fun, after all. That will be all. I hope you enjoy discovering the hero title system so many fans hold so beloved. And if at all possible, I hope it leads you to new discoveries about yourself. Do let me know if it does, yes? Until then, farewell. Hey chums, OD here, and today we're going to talk about Homestuck's most powerful hyperflexible system. The hero titles are a hyperflexible mythology system based on the iconic Hero of Time structure used to describe Link in Legend of Zelda Ocarina of Time. Consisting of two master and twelve standard classes that combine with a system of twelve aspects, a player's class spec tells you about their personality, innate tendencies, and broad power sets. The core rule of Paradox Space is that the characters are, on some level, always creating their own reality. As such, the power of their hero titles comes from their own personalities and thoughts. That means that even if two people had the same combination of the 168 class specs, the way that each individual character interprets their role, and so imagines the power it gives them, would differ between the two. So two Thieves of Heart would likely execute their roles in completely different ways, depending on how they interpreted both the role of a thief and the nature of heart. Of course, the system wouldn't work if there was only one interpretation for what a thief could do, or what heart is. So while Legend of Zelda provides the system structure, Hussey draws on three distinct concepts to flesh out its depth. Carl Jung's mythic archetypes and the existential philosophy of Yin Yang for the classes, and Gnostic myths' aeons for the aspects. Let's cover the aspects first. As you might remember from the Crookside Artifact episode, the Gnostic creation myth has Abraxas generate a series of idea gods known as Aeons, who come in bonded pairs meant to create all of reality. Homestuck's 12 aspects work much the same way. They represent a reductive system that breaks reality down into its basis components, much like the traditional four elements from Greek philosophy. But where the elements try to break down what physical reality is made of, the aspects try to break down what the realities in our minds are made of. And since the aspects are also the primordial particles of paradox space, Homestuck argues there's no difference between the two. Based on this, my cool pal Text Talks argues that since Homestuck's reality includes the fact that it's a story, each of the aspects is also linked to an element in the construction of a narrative. Taking this into account, here's a short description of each aspect. Space and time are the aspects concerned with physical dimensions. Together they make up all of space-time. Space is also linked to visual art, environments, and the setting. Time is linked to music, narrative pacing, and decay. Light and Void are linked to Gnosticism's World of Light and World of Darkness, respectively. Light is found in imagination and true information, good fortune, and what's important and plot relevant. 
Void deals in the physical world, nothingness or meaninglessness, secrets, lies, misfortune, the unknowable, and plot irrelevance. Life and doom relate to the power we wield over reality and that which reality wields over us. Doom describes the conflict of the story, the burden that the world places on every character. It's connected to rules, technology, sacrifice, and high output that comes with an unsustainable energy cost. Life, meanwhile, describes agency, the power with which a character overcomes the obstacles before them. It's linked to growth, drive, rule-breaking, and the consumption and use of energy to survive. As such, life players tend to be very wealthy and have a great amount of influence over their societies, while Doom players tend to be linked to labor and poverty. Breath and Blood are both concerned with people, goals, teamwork, and direction. Breath is linked to motion, freedom, goals set by oneself, and detachment from the world. It describes the plot, the core events that drive the story. Blood represents connection, responsibility, commitment to a collective, and attachment to the world. It describes character dynamics, the relationships that influence the cast as the story moves along. Hope and Rage are concerned with perspective. Hope relates to faith, possibilities, positive emotions, and all things imaginary and idealistic. It also describes our faith in the narrative's coherence, our excitement for building plot threads and ability to immerse ourselves in the fictional world. Rage relates to negative emotions and the ways they have us focus on the physical reality right in front of us. It describes the contrivance present in every story, making us see through the illusion of the fiction to focus on its flaws instead. Finally, heart and mind relate to the nature of the self and the two sides of a character, their feelings and choices. Heart reflects the soul, inner feelings, love and attraction, and platonic ideals of both people and objects. Heart players often have weapons that are unique, personal, and change very little. Mind reflects the thoughts between the hero's inner world and reality. Its focus is on choices, how we present ourselves to the world around us, and the experiences that make us unique. The Seer of Mind's weapon is highly adaptable, taking a variety of forms depending on her needs. None of these descriptions are exhaustive. Each aspect represents a domain of influence that the hero rules over and uses as a source of power. How they use that power depends on who they are, which brings us to the classes and to our old pal Carl Jung. This concludes our discussion on the aspects. Please continue our conversation by following the link to discover the other half of this system, the hero classes, next. Also, be sure to click the bell icon below if you wish to be notified of the arrival of future videos. Thank you for listening. Until next time, keep rising.